Hey guys, it's Angela. I wanted to show you a little something different. I know you guys love my flowers, but I promise to still bring you flowers. I just thought I'd share some of the projects that I actually am using in my home. And I hope that you can enjoy them as well as you love the flowers. They're very practical solutions to certain problems if you have a budget. So I hope you continue to watch these sort of projects and let me know in the comments if you like them. You're going to need some paint brushes, water, flour, some white glue, any kind will do, a bowl, some balloons, any size that you like to use is fine, some pointy sharp scissors and some regular scissors, some masking tape, some E6000, again coffee filters, some bling wrap or something ornate that you like to decorate greatly, uh, that's optional. I recommend gloves and then we're going to use about a cup of flour, maybe two, and then we're going to add the rest of this glue. I have a little bit in the bottom, I'm just going to add some water to it. I use the glue to make sure it doesn't crumble in certain spots or crack and you just need a little bit. And you mix in the water and the glue, you're going to do it slowly, just add a little water at a time. And you're going to continue to add water and stir out the lumps until it's the consistency of a very thin pancake batter. Now I'm going to rip the coffee strips, their coffee filter into strips and lie them, dip them in the paper mache and then I'm going to lay them on top of each other, kind of overlapping. In hindsight, I would have done one smooth layer initially and then added more layers of the coffee filters. The reason I like this is because coffee filters do not tear when they're wet and they're fairly translucent so if I wanted to let some light come through from a candle or an LED light it would be able to do so even if I paint it I can still see through it but I like this method because it's just that practical you don't have to worry about ripping it when you're opening it up from removing it from the paper mache uh, it's gonna be fine I made the ends pointy to look like a broken egg the balloon might wobble a little bit when you're applying the paper mache. As a matter of fact, it's going to fall over completely. So what I did was I taped the knot down to a piece of cardboard or a box or something. And then I taped uh, four pieces of tape all the way around the balloon to keep the bottom straight up in the air. So that's a cool trick to learn and use because that's the only way you're going to make it straight. And here it is when it dries. I just popped the balloon and removed it. Make sure when you position the tape that it's not interfering with the paper mache. Then I situated the balloon in the direction I want the opening to face in and I just pressed my hand down to make it a flat surface on the bottom just so that it can stay stable in the position and it'll, it'll work with you. So just press it down with your fist to position it how you want it and this is what it looks like. I wanted it to be a similar color as the way it was when it dried so I mixed some paint and I tried to duplicate the exact color of the flower glue and water. I wasn't sure if the paper mache would change colors so I just decided to paint it just in case. I gave a good generous two coats of that. You're probably going to want to prime this if you're going to paint it another color, but close to the color you're going to paint it or just two coats of the color that you're going to paint it. But I painted two coats of this color that I mixed that was similar to the color it dried in. After each coat, you're probably going to have to turn the glow in different directions and you'll see spots that you missed from different angles and just load your brush up really well and try to get in those cracks and crevices. 
but uh, you, even after it dries after the second coat you're going to probably find more spots so don't feel discouraged just keep painting and make sure everything's covered to your liking after that dries I wanted to put some rose gold in the inside so I just mixed a couple colors together that would turn out the way I wanted and I painted the inside gold didn't pay as much attention to getting into all the cracks on the inside was because it's hard to do and it's really not necessary especially if you're going to put stuff in the inside like I'm going to leave it for now the way it is uh, just an open vessel but eventually I might want to put a candle, an LED candle or some flowers or something in there so I didn't pay that much attention but I did want to get some good much and then I hated it. It was a little bit bland for my project so I decided to paint the outside black and white and have a little bit of gold on the edging. So here I am painted a, a, through a straight line kind of around the half of the bottom half of the vase to separate the top and the bottom and paint the back the black on the bottom and the white on the top and then I'm gonna overlap the gold a little bit on the outsides to kind of represent that it was something that was broken again like in the previous clips uh, so that it would look like it was gold inside and I went through the arduous task of painting in the black and the white and all the crevices like I had with the other color and it, it, I didn't cover it completely I didn't see the complete pace the way it really looks until I was shooting the clip for the uh, outro but I did go back and cover it cheat code Before I painted the white, I made sure the black was dry, and now I'm going to paint the white. It's just easier to handle to maneuver the piece while you're painting, and you won't mix or smudge the colors together. So I always wait till everything dries before I go to the next phase. See how I wiggle my loaded brush into some of the cracks or around the line to get it nice and straight. It's never going to be completely straight because it's not flat. So you're going to still be able to make a fairly straight line. It's going to look organic though so don't worry. Just get in there with the brush and handle your business. This is what it looks like when you're all done painting the outside and the inside and now I'm going to just sit it on top of a spray can to make sure it completely dries without the bottom sticking to another surface. Then I'm going to edge it up with some gold. This line should not and will not be perfect. After that dried, I added a bead of E6000 to the edges and I cut a very thin strip very close to the beads because it's iron on and glued it in pieces around the edges of the piece. I'm not sure what I did with the footage for the actual application of the bead of glue or the bead of jewels so we just left it like this in the video I'm sure you can figure it out but I think it's self-explanatory pretty and practical don't neglect using pieces like this that you made yourself or things that you can repurpose around your home for your new decorating purposes in your new space and make sure you like comment share and subscribe let me know in the comments if you enjoy this kind of video but I think I'm gonna switch it up anyway but I'll thank you for very much for watching this video you guys and I appreciate you your comments and your interaction see you next time